Hi, everybody. We're just going to take a few minutes to do a brief meditation on the Acts of the Apostles, chapters 15 to 17. This is the follow-up session to our having completed the first half of the book of Acts and then moved into chapters uh, 12 through 14, dealing with Paul's first missionary journey. And now in chapter 15, we take a look at the council at Jerusalem where they dealt with the question of whether or not new Gentile Christians needed to conform with Jewish religious rules. And we'll continue with the second journey of Paul up through chapter 17. And keeping in mind that we are focusing on how the Holy Spirit was acting through the apostles throughout the book of Acts. Again, this is Paul's second journey, and we are recalling that Saul, who has now been renamed Paul, is traveling with Silas at this point. He had traveled with Barnabas, having been anointed by the disciples to do so. He was continuing to carry the gospel. And one of the questions that we ended with on our last discussion was brought up with Va by Vanya with regard to our recent study of the book of Revelations, which of these churches that we are discussing as we talk about the three missionary journeys of Paul were the churches that were mentioned in the first two chapters of the book of Revelations, the churches that form that kind of circle around the entire region there. Uh, so we'll look at that as we're having this discussion today. And we really want to focus in on um, as I mentioned, the Jerusalem Council, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the throughout the um, throughout the region. And as we always do, we want to keep in mind what do these texts that we're reading have to tell us that is relevant for us in the church of today. We want to read to start out from Acts chapter 15, verse 4. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. So keeping in mind that as we left off our discussion last week, Paul and Barnabas were returning to Jerusalem to deal with the question of whether or not newly converted Greek or Hellenistic Christians needed to be circumcised and comply with all of the Jewish laws and rituals. And when they got there, we learned that they explained what had been happening, that they had been sharing the gospel and people had been converting. And we find in the, again, further on in the 15th chapter, they were bearing witness that God was filling these new converts with the gift of the Holy Spirit and that God was providing them with the Holy Spirit because God knows the heart of people and their argument was that God was not going to put the traditions and the legal requirements on new converts to Christianity requirements that those who had been uh, um, devoted to the God of creation the God the creator God since for centuries uh, had never been able to live up to those legal requirements themselves. And they and Paul was making the argument they shouldn't put this bondage on others. Now, 
keeping in mind that the ancient history books were more concerned with the themes or the meanings of the events and the activities and the, the dialogue that's taking place and not so um, concerned as we are in our modern writing of history or telling of history and accuracy around the exact dates and the exact sequence of events and that sort of thing. So you'll find when we read in Galatians 2, which we left off talking about at the end of our last discussion as well, because in Galatians 2, Paul himself in his letter to the Galatians wrote about this council of Jerusalem. And when you listen to Paul's account, you will find a difference in the timing, the sequence of the timing, um, which um, should only point out to us the way ancient literature was shaped around the, the themes and the meanings rather than around the specific dates and sequence of events. I hope that you've had a chance to read the account of the Council at Jerusalem, both in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts and in Galatians 2. As we move on into the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, you may recall from a recent sermon about um, Paul and Silas's travels into Macedonia that Paul received a vision of a man pleading with him to come to Macedonia and therefore they made that trip and it was there that he encountered Lydia, the businesswoman who dealt in purple cloth and ended up uh, baptizing her entire household and being persuaded by her to go to her home. And there we have an account, an early account of how congregations were established in the homes of these women of means. Uh, we find as we read through the chapter that Paul and Silas were imprisoned, that they were beaten, that uh, as they were in prison, they were singing songs of praise at midnight and their chains fell off. Um, and we can make that connection between our spiritual chains, or our psychological change, or our emotional chains falling off when we sing songs of praise. Uh, we know from the account in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts that the jailer and his household were also converted and baptized. Moving into the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, we find um, these apostles traveling to Thessalonica where they taught in the synagogue. And that's a, a pattern with them when they would go into a new city, they would teach in the synagogue. Uh, they taught with boldness, they taught with authority. And when they, they did so, they often were met with um, resistance or um, people were upset because this was a change from the status quo. And in this particular, instance, um, they were attacked. Uh, some of the people believed and others attacked them. Uh, they traveled on to Berea and then on to Athens, um, which we find was a place that was filled with idols. We recall that it was lawful uh, to uh, worship multiple deities and to worship the rulers of that era, and it was unlawful uh, to be devoted to only one God um, th that was allowed for the Jewish peoples because it was respected that that was an ancient tradition. But for this new group of Christians, uh, when the Jewish establishment differentiated itself from this new Messianic Christian group, the uh, authorities would feel that they had grounds to stand on to, um, to try and drive out this new religious group, to, to squash it because it was um, devotion to one God, but not according to a lengthy ancient tradition. In Acts 17, 24, which we'll read as our second scripture reading today, Acts 17 and 24, uh, we find that 
um, those who worship the God who created the world, Paul is teaching that this creator God does not dwell in human temples. So he's differentiating um, the God of the Jewish people who is the God of the Christian people, the same God um, as being different from the idol gods that were worshiped. Chapter 17, verse 24. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. That is um, verses 24 and 25 of the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. And as Paul continues upon his journey and continues to establish churches, uh, coming back to that question about which of these churches are mentioned in the book of Revelations, we have the seven churches in the book of Revelations, which are Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and um, Laodicea. And um, on the first missionary journey, um, the, the cities that were visited were Derby, Lystra, Iconium, Pisidian, Antioch, Perga, Italia, and Syrian Antioch. So I will lay out the question, although not all of these seven churches have been mentioned in chapters 15 to 17, I would challenge you to take a look and see which of them were. In Revelations, we find that John the Revelator received the vision for these seven churches, and we might summarize the messages to the churches having been established by Paul and having started out with a zeal and a mission to, to um, place faith in Christ and to uh, teach and preach the gospel. Um, John the Revelator is telling, instructing the churches to return to their first love, to be faithful, to remain faithful to, through, tri through tribulation, through poverty, making the point of being determined to remain faithful uh, to the teachings of Jesus Christ and not interspersing them with the teachings of idol worship like the Balak and Balaam. They were called upon to denounce the spirit of Jezebel, to wake up, to keep the faith, to be on fire, to have a passion for the gospel, a passion for the kingdom of God. So what does all this have to do with us today? Holy Spirit is still acting through us. God is still greater than any building. We still have households to baptize into covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we walk in your invisible kingdom, we seek the presence, the comfort, the power, and the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bless each one as we strive to live with passion, to remain faithful, to be a light for the path of those who seek to walk in the way of life and of love. We praise you and we thank you. We ask you to forgive us our sins. We ask you to help us to be forgiving of others, that our hearts may be free from anger, that we would not seek vengeance on those who oppose us, but rather pray that hearts and minds will be opened and changed to be filled with the love, the peace, the justice of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me during this short meditation upon Acts 15 through 17. I look forward to next week when we meditate upon Acts 18 through 21. God bless.